Good afternoon, and welcome to Moments of Hope with your truly Pastor Curtis Robert Grant of the Zion Hope Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, so glad just to be alive this morning. Uh, love you very much. For those of you that are going to join with us in our conference call, you can call us at 515-606-5380. Uh, the access code is 636-090. Uh, I hope all is well with your household, and I hope that the Lord has been kind to you and yours. And uh, prayerfully, we thank God that you have brought your Bible so that we can quickly uh, study uh, a scripture uh, that we might gain some uh, greater knowledge of the Word of God. Uh, there's a scripture that I want to share with you very quickly, and hopefully we can get through this today. It's uh, from James chapter 4, uh, starting with verse 11. <clears throat> it says, Speak not evil one of another, brethren, that he that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judgeth the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. <clears throat> there is now, uh, there is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who art thou that judges one another? Go to now, ye that say, tomorrow or to day or today or tomorrow we will go into such city and continue their year and buy and sell and get gain and verse 14 says whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appeareth for a moment in a little time and then vanish away for that ye ought to say if the lord will we shall live and do this or that but now ye rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good uh, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And uh, I know that we have been talking about love and, and, and I'll see if I can make this thing tie in and, and hopefully you'll be able to understand this presentation uh, because you know, we've been talking about um, the love of God, the agape, the love of God. And when you talk about that, you can't uh, help but to talk about God and how he interacts with us and how he does with us. Uh, and so we talked about um, John 3.16, where God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. And then we talked about, uh, 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 I think it was Romans, where, uh, where God has shared love abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And uh, we end up going down to uh, the particular scripture that pointed out that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And we talked about the expression of love on Calvary's cross, where Jesus Christ is going, has gone through a lot of humiliation and even after all that he had gone through, uh, he still opens his mouth and declares, Father, forgive them for they, not know, they know not what they do. And so uh, what we learned then was love uh, is encumbered by forgiveness. And so you see these things being open. And I'm hoping today that we will be able to tie this in uh, to help you understand uh, where we are when it comes to love and its expression. Uh, you see, brothers and sisters, when it comes to the agape, uh, the word agape simply means uh, to have a disposition of desire uh, and a decision to actually make someone else happy in your presentation. And so what it wants to submit then that the only reason we show up and do for others is so that we can see them happy. There is no strings attached. There is no manipulation involved. We just do what we do because we want other people to be happy. And I pause here today because uh, one of the biggest sins in the believer's life is the sin of the mouth. And most of us won't admit it because we're so busy running our mouths that we don't give a whole lot of thought to what comes out of our mouths. 
For the Bible says in Matthew chapter 12, it says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But it goes on to declare that a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, speaketh good things. Out of the good, uh, the evil treasure, out of an evil man, uh, speaketh evil things. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, and so read it when you get a chance. What it then goes on to say that every idle word that proceeds out of a person's mouth, he will give account on the day of judgment for what he wants to submit then, uh, that with your words you are justified and with your words you are condemned. And what the Bible wants to submit in Matthew, that when you allow things to come out of your mouth, it is only a reflection of the condition of your heart. And see, when you look at things that we say to one another and how disrespectful we have become to one another, we've got to recognize that the word and the verbiage that we use is only an expression of the condition of our heart. Oftentimes, I'm uh, talking to people and I'm 57 years old and I say things like ma'am and I say things like sir and when I say those things some people get offended because they don't understand that it's not that you're old it's just the fact that when I look at you as an object, I see an object of respect. And what I'm saying to you is not uh, to demean you or to make you feel old. It's simply because what's in my heart will come out of my mouth. And so you got to understand, brothers and sisters, the reason that we are so disrespectful and so nasty is simply because our hearts have been broken in many places. Pain has filled our heart. Unforgiveness has saturated our heart. Uh, ugliness has captivated our hearts. And we have not yet paid attention to the words that proceed out of our mouths. And I oftentimes say that if you squeeze a ketchup bottle, what's going to come out? Ketchup. If you squeeze the mustard bottle, what's going to come out? Mustard. If you squeeze the mayonnaise bottle, what's going to come out? Mayonnaise. If you squeeze a person that has been hurt, what's going to come out? It's going to come out hurt. That's why we get the saying that hurt people hurt other people because when your heart has been broken and your heart has been filled with pain, the only thing that can proceed out of your mouth is negative words that hurt other people. And saints, let me tell you, I got to hurry because I know my time is running out. I got to help you understand that oftentimes we use words to hurt other people. But you have to understand that when you use those words to hurt other people, it's only because it's a condition of your heart. Because a person that has a good heart will see evil and refuse to talk about the evil that he sees. In other words, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that when you allow evil stuff to flow out of your mouth, it's only because you are experiencing some things by the condition of your heart. And saints, the truth about it is until we let God get a hold to our hearts and fix us from the inside out, we're going to continue to destroy people with our words. And that's what brings us to James. Because watch what James says. James says, uh, brethren, speak not evil of one another. Brothering is what he says. And when you look at the word evil, what you have to understand from the Greek perspective, it actually means not to speak against. And so you have to ask yourself the question, what you mean speak against what? And if you look at the context, he wants to refer to them as brethren, which means that he's referring to Christian believers 
believers. And when you look at the Christian believer, what makes a person a Christian believer is the fact that once he believes, God fills him with the Holy Spirit. And so what he wants to submit then, that when you use words that is not uh, conditional to the spirit that dwells within your brother, you literally speak against him. Because if you call them anything other than blessed, if you call them anything other than gifted, if you call them anything other than anointed, if you call them anything other than wonderful, if you call them anything other than something that will lift up their spirit in edification, you have literally spoken against your brother. Because as the scripture says, out of the bundles of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so what he wants to submit then, he wants to say to us in the text, judge not, because if you judge, you are a judge of the law and not a doer of the law. Well, what is the law, Rev? Well, according to the scripture, the law is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind, and love thy neighbor as thyself. And so the question now becomes, will you speak harsh to yourself? Because anybody that's got a healthy mind and a healthy heart don't speak ugly about himself. Which brings me now to another thought. Because if you are thinking bad about yourself, and if you are uh, thinking bad about yourself, the likelihood of you talking bad or even talking loud or even talking ugly about who you are becomes the reflection and the condition of your heart. And so all I'm saying to you is this, is that you as a believer have to allow God to move some of the hurts, to remove some of the pains through forgiveness. And that's why you got to turn some of this stuff loose because saints, let's be honest, some of the words that come out of our mouths are so sharp and so intense that we end up murdering the person that's on the inside because your words can become abusive. And so saints, you don't even understand that abuse don't just show up physically. When you pop somebody in the eye, your words are just as damaging. When you open your mouth and you speak against your brother and call them other, anything other than them being blessed. Because guess what? The devil is a murderer, and he's been a murderer from the beginning. And saints, when you open your mouth that literally destroys somebody else, you're literally working with the devil because the Holy Ghost that God gives to us don't give to us to destroy somebody. He gives it to us so that we can lift up bow down heads, that we can encourage the discouraged hearts, that we might be able to bring healing to people who's been broken. God gives us the Holy Ghost so that when we open our mouths, we open our mouths in edification to encourage somebody who has lost their way, who have gotten to the place where they don't want to go on no more. But when the Holy, Spirit, Holy Ghost speaks, he'll say, you can do this. You can do it. You can be whatever God says you can be. And so saints, I'm trying to help you understand that we can no longer operate with the uh, normal operation because when we are filled with the spirit of God we're going to have to step back and let God do the talking and while God is doing the talking we're going to have to let the Holy Spirit heal us from the inside out so that our words will become a reflection of our heart's condition so that we can be everything that God told us to be I've got to get out of here because my time is running short. What James then says, he says that life is like a vapor. It appears for a little moment and then after that it just vanishes away. 
In other words, y'all, we ain't got long here. You see, we ain't got long to stay here. And y'all, how many know that since life is so short, we cannot allow our hearts to abide in unforgiveness. We cannot allow our hearts to just hold on to pain and suffering. We cannot allow our hearts to be broken and not want God to heal them because life is too short. One of the most sad things I've ever seen in my whole profession, or uh, not profession, or my uh, calling as a preacher slash the pastor, uh, is people who stand up uh, in funerals uh, to declare their love for the deceased uh, and say the one thing that runs through my mind uh, on a consistent basis uh, is did they know that? Uh, because saints, uh, let's be honest, uh, we don't tell people how much we truly love them until they stretched out in somebody's church because we've been hurt so much we just allow our hurt to hurt other people. But how about you take your desire and your decision and choose words that will edify, that will help somebody lift up a bow down head. Why don't you take your desire and your decision to tell somebody that God loves them. Why don't you use your desire and your decision to open your mouth and give somebody some encouraging words because at the end of the day saints we're going to all have to give an account for every word that proceeds out of our mouth because life is too short and you're going to have to turn loose some unforgiveness matter of fact turn it all loose you're going to have to turn loose some pain you're going to have to turn loose some people because at the end of the day, the worst abuse you can ever receive is not physical abuse. It's a verbal abuse. People who call you stuff that you are not. And even if I ain't what our God want me to be, encourage me to be it. Because you can always call me what you think you see. But the truth of the matter is that when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, even though I see evil, I try to encourage it to become good. Because what's in my heart is going to come out of my mouth. And so, saints, I'm hoping you heard me today because, you know, uh, this abuse that we are giving to one another is crazy. Listen to how we talk to one another. Uh, you know, I wish I could say what I want to say, but my daughters will cringe in their spirits. Uh, but I'm saying that, saints, uh, the stuff we call one another, we answer to, and the stuff we respond to is absolutely ridiculous. If you ain't, listen, if you ain't calling uh, the, the, your counterpart a queen, then don't call her nothing else other than what you what she really is. Because at the end, I'm trying not to preach here, uh, but at the end of the day, it's not the person that you're referring to that's got the issue. It's the person that got the broken heart and the broken condition. Because at the end of the day, it's easy to assault people when your heart has been broken. And so at the end of the day, we need to really search ourselves because the stuff that comes out of our mouths only become out of our mouths because we have a desire and a choice. Uh, I always tell my sons and daughters, listen, there's a difference between reacting and responding. See, when you're in the flesh and you're in your feelings, you respond. You, you react. When something's said and something done, you react. And reaction don't give much thought to nothing because reaction comes from how you feel. And if you be honest with yourself, there have been times when you reacted and didn't think about what you were going to do, and then you were sorry that you did it because you did it out of your emotion. As children of God, we can't react. We got to respond. What's the difference, Ralph? Well, responding simply means that before I say anything, I need to process it, think about it, before I let it come out of my mouth. Because at the end of the day, we've got to learn how to use our tongues, our heart's condition for edification 
and not destruction. And so when you talk about love, love just don't show up in a diamond ring, don't show up in a brand new car. Love literally shows up in stuff as in, as in the words you choose that comes out of your mouth to the people you share with. Stephen Wonder wrote a song, these three words, I love you, is often not expressed simply because there's so much other mess in our hearts that we feel vulnerable when we tell people how we truly feel about them. And all I'm saying to you as uh, uh, your pastor, uh, and for those of you that are connected to us today, I'm your pastor today. Uh, you're going to have to let some of that stuff go because God has ordained you to be one that is a lifter of bowed down heads. And you can't lift others when your head is bowed down. So lift up your head, O ye gates, and even lift them up, ye everlasting doors. And guess what? The king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. What battle is he mighty in? The battle of my heart. When I've been broken, he can battle to heal it. When I've been disrespected, he can battle to heal it. And so all you have to do is let God be God in your life. And so if those of you that are on the end of these uh, mechanisms uh, have heard something that inspired and touched your heart today, and you want to give your life to God, you certainly can do so. All you have to do is inbox us. And uh, our uh, academy will call you back. We need your name and your number. Because when we get your inbox, your name and your number, our uh, membership academy will call you back to find out how we can assist you to try to get you in somebody's church. If you want to come to Zion, that's fine. But that's not the reason this call goes out. Because we want people to be saved. Because at the end of the day, whether you be at Zion or whether you be at another church, as long as they're preaching Jesus crucified, uh, 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 risen from the dead, uh, uh, we are still on good terms. And so at the end of the day, if that be you, inbox us quickly that we might be able to assist you getting where you need to be. Uh, don't forget today at 1 o'clock that we are uh, be praying for all of our world and for our churches, for our pastors, uh, for the people who have lost loved ones, for sickness, and all of the above. And whatever God lays upon your heart to pray for, please, ma'am, please, sir, exercise your gift of praying. Because prayer, uh, especially in these times, is most definitely necessary. I want to quickly remind you is that every day at 12 o'clock, we will be doing moments of hope. And even on Wednesday, when we do Bible class, we're going to be on at 12. And for those of you that can't catch Bible class on tw at 12, you can catch it at 6 because we're going to download it at 12 o'clock. So those who get on at 12 can see it. And then those who may can't see it at 12 may be able to see it at 6. But it will be there available. And then again, every day at 12, from Monday through Saturday. And then on Sunday, we're going to start worship live at 10 o'clock, we ask that you come and be a part of the worship. We ask that you come and be a part of us because we are just trying to do the best we can with what God has allotted that we might give him the glory and the praise. Let us pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for what you have shared with us in this place. I pray now that you would allow your anointing to touch the hearts and destroy the yokes. Uh, we have gotten so many things happened to us in this world that our hearts have hold, held on to and we are broken from the inside out. And so God, I pray now that you would begin to heal the very hearts of your people, uh, that our words might reflect the condition of our hearts, that you be glorified in the stuff we say. Bless us now. Bless our household, everyone that's connected to us. Bless this feeble attempt to help somebody, that you get the glory and we walk in the victory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God.